Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are going to be working on a little project back here on the patio and I'm going to give you an update on how all the plantings are doing in this area because it's been a while since we've been here and now that it is December the garden has a whole different look to it so I wanted to show you um, how things are doing back here and believe it or not in December I have blooms in this space fantastic this is one of the reasons that we love gardening in the south this is when it pays off to be in the south and it is our reward for surviving the heat and humidity of the summer the project that i'm going to be doing today is right here where the flagstone is below those steps i have some ajuga that i want to plant as a ground cover between those pieces of flagstone it's a beautiful dark black purple um scallop color sorry y'all there's a the heron just took off we have a a blue heron that lives here we call him harry the heron and he just um flew out of the creek and i was like what is that thing coming after me but sorry it's a squirrel um yes so it is a really dark dark purple almost a black color i believe it's called black scallop i will show you all that um but yeah it's going to be fun so let's flip the camera around and give a little update on what is happening in the garden here here we have the big picture of the space that we are currently looking at this beautiful dark evergreen shrub that you see that is a tea olive or a sweet osmanthus if you've been around me for any length of time you know how much i absolutely love these plants um, they are definitely a southern plant they love it hot that's why we have it planted here um, because we are a little bit on the borderline of it being too cold this one is doing fantastic it is beautiful but what we love the main reason that i do adore the tea olives um, so much is because this time of year they will produce these little tea tiny white flowers it's right here now we just had a night of low 30 degree weather um, let's see here's a little bit better one right there they are little tea tiny blooms but they smell amazing they it's like an orange jasmine honeysuckle smell tea olives will bloom beginning in the fall and then they will bloom periodically throughout the winter into the springtime so that's how she is doing then we have um, the nicotina plants that is what is right here they are tender perennials for us this is an experiment we will see how they do um, but everything else in, in this bed is doing fantastic the desert plain grasses have started to turn their kind of their brown foliage for the winter they're doing great then we have the daisy maize i have found that daisy maize for us are pretty much a little bit of an evergreen so they'll keep this kind of foliage throughout the winter and then the scentlandias are the ones in the back with that beautiful um, burgundy color they have just an amazing fall color to them and they really hold on to their 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 um, leaves quite well so the scentlandia is just a gorgeous deep red color loving them um, moving on around here to the side you can see that i have all of my tools ready to work in this area so the idea is that i'm going to plant the ajuga between the pieces of the flagstone um, and this is the ajuga right here you can see i have my biotone and i have my power planter and all sorts of good tools um, but this is the ajuga right here see how beautiful that is that color on it um, let's see if i can find a tag okay here we go so you can see that this is black scallop it is an ajuga as i've said before it is a nice low growing perennial only four to six inches tall zones four to nine full sun absolutely easy it will spread just a little bit not crazy invasive but i think it'll just be a really nice addition to this space now moving on you can see back here my incredibles in the back right right back here they have started to go dormant been really impressed with how well they have kept their leaves though and then we have the spirea look at the fantastic color on this beauty 
loving it. This is the double play doozy, I believe. Oh, if I'm wrong, I'll I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but yeah, so they are doing great, doing wonderful, really excited with how well they are doing. And then come on up here. Let's move on up. Of course, the Western urns filled with violas. And see, I have the ajuga in here as well with a little bit of the um, artemisia right there. Loving these. They're giving me lots of beautiful color. And then, do you see those pops of white? Yes, those are my camellias. These are the white shishi from Southern Living Plant Collection. All right, so here we go. These are sasanquas because they're blooming now. But the white shishi is just a beautiful, pure white, nice, full bloom on it. They were getting ready to explode in blooms. And wouldn't you know it, that was the night we got like down to 26. So these are rebounding and doing really well. Camellias are kind of a slow grower. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to get some height on these guys. But if you remember here in this um, bed, we have the sprinter boxwoods and then white shishi. And it just rotates back and forth. Um, and they are doing really, really well. And then there on the very end, we have the gardenias also from the Southern Living Plant Collection. Um, these white shishis are gonna be a more of a petite one. So that is why I put them here. Normally, I would never recommend to put a camellia where the house is only, like the, your foundation is only maybe three feet tall, but that'll be about the size for these guys. So they're doing great. Love that I have some fall color. And then swinging on over, my David Austins, I'm still getting blooms off of this Scepter de Isle. It is crazy. Here we are in December, and this sweet thing is just blooming her little head off. Well, you know, for December, she's blooming her head off. So we've got blooms there, and then we've got, um, look at this. This Scepter de Isle, to me, is like the most perfect shade of pink. Just gorgeous. It's not my absolute most favorite smell, but it surely is. I think one of the absolute prettiest. So doing well as is Ruval Dahl and then down here we have Desdemona. You will notice that my Roses of Sharon completely naked, right? They have lost all their blooms, all their foliage. Now the time that I will prune my Rose of Sharon, this is the white chiffon right here, will be late winter into early spring. I'm gonna move some of my David Austins this year and that will happen late winter, early spring. And that is the time you prune them. So for now, they're just gonna hang out and enjoy their winter season here on the patio. I do wanna give you an update also on Yin and Yang Viburnum. They are doing magnificently well. That is the two evergreens right here in front of us. I don't know which one is Yin and which one is Yang because, huh, I didn't mark them and they look so incredibly similar. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm fighting with the sun right here. But look at that beautiful red stems on these guys. Just gorgeous. These are for the southern climate. They are evergreens. They are low maintenance. They're fast growers and they are absolutely beautiful. Loving them. And then over here on this side, if you remember we planted this bed together with the kale and the artemisia and i had put pansies in there they did terrible so i switched them out and put violas they are doing much better doing really well and so now let's get started on the project of the ajuga all right we are ready to plant the ajuga now here in the bed um, just a couple of reasons why i chose to use this ajuga first of all it is the middle of December. The nursery is now closed for the season and we had a good bit of this ajuga left over. So why not go ahead and use it, put it to good use, get it in the ground. Um, so that was first, it was available. So I decided to use it. Two, it's a fantastic plant. I love the color of it. Nice, deep, rich, purple, almost black color to it. I think it'll really look very nice as far as a contrast against this lighter flagstone. 
And then two, it makes a great ground cover. A juga bugle, bugle weed, as it's also known, um, just makes a fantastic ground cover. It can handle light foot traffic. If you were gonna plant this in a really high traffic area, this is probably not the best choice, but certainly this is, this steps this area right here is not a high traffic zone for us so it can handle that occasional people stepping on it you know every once in a while not a problem it will be um, just a nice ground cover in that it will slowly spread it is not uh, as fast as a grower say like as like creeping jenny but it will spread and of course it just holds in the mulch, if we get rain, it'll do really well. Um, it just is a nice, attractive, different layer to the garden. Now, on the other side of the bed, as far as like right here on the edge of the steps, we do have an irrigation pop-up valve. So that what that is, not irrigation, sorry, a drainage. So we have from our downspouts, all of the downspouts are connected to you know underground tubing so that comes out and then we have the green pop up so when it rains it little it literally pops up and the water flows out once the water's gone then it goes back down that is in the middle of the flagstone jerry is going to move that out into the yard um, at some point so for now i'm going to leave that far left side of the bed empty. I will reserve some of the ajuga to then go back and plant once he has moved that pop-up valve, but there's no point in me wasting time or energy when he's going to come back through here in a, you know, a couple of days or a couple of weeks and move that and the plant's going to have to come out again. So we'll just plant it once he is done with it. But what I'm going to do now is just get the ajugas and place them throughout the bed so I know exactly where I want to have them. I think for the most part, I can plant the whole container these are quart size containers but the great thing about ajuga is that if i need to divide it and if i need to get smaller pieces to plant in little nooks and crannies then i certainly can do that um, so for now i'm just going to take what i have and i'm going to place it in the bed that is a good start what I'm going to do this is going to be a little bit of an experiment I do have my power planter so I've got my power planter you will notice that I am using a much smaller auger than what we traditionally use when we're planting shrubs here at uh, Creekside so this is I believe that looks like probably a three inch auger it's going to be a little bit smaller than my quart size container but I think this will be better because I can make the hole a little bit bigger just by moving the auger around as opposed to going with a bigger auger bit that's going to be too big between my flagstone. Um, so I have my Cobra, I do have my hand trial, so I will move the mulch back. We're just going to try it and see if the auger will work. And when I say will the auger work, I know that the auger will dig. My question is, of course, I don't want to hit my flagstone and break it up into pieces. So that's where the question is. So hopefully it will work because it'll make it, this job a whole lot faster. So we'll do that. Each plant will receive biotone. We'll get it nice and deep down there in the ground. Um, because this is a perennial and the nature of this, I'm not gonna plant it high. I will plant it even with the soil level because this is not gonna be on irrigation. Obviously, it is a ground cover. It can be nice and low. So when I plant it, it will be flush with the soil line and then we'll put the mulch back and then that should be pretty much it. So yeah, we're just gonna get started here.
friends, I got 21 of the ajugas planted in the flagstone behind me. It was a pretty relatively easy job to do. The auger certainly made quick work of digging all of those holes, especially since I did have some of the gravel left over from the patio construction. So that was nice that it took care of that with no problem. You might notice that when I was auging the holes, once I was done auging, my auger was full of soil. And so I went back over into the grass and kind of spun it and got that extra soil off. That way I wasn't kind of refilling my hole with soil. I put it out into the grass, it sprays it out. It'll be fine. It's just an easy way to clean off my auger instead of putting it back in and dirtying up all of the mulch. Now we are going to try a little something because you know I'm all about experimenting to see if something works. So this is what we're going to do. You can see that um, this is where I was talking about right up here. That's the little pop-up drain. That's why I don't have any ajuga planted in front of that because I want to make sure that um, when Jerry comes in here and trenches that out that I don't lose any plants. But you can see here are the ajugas in there. They are the full size quart ones that fit really nicely in those big spaces between the flagstone. What we're gonna try is to take some, at least one of the ajugas and we're going to divide it out and plant it in maybe say like this little crack right here. Um, let's just see how it works when we tear one apart and replant all the pieces. All right, so Jenny's filming by herself today, so hopefully this will work. Okay, so we have an ajuga, right? And it's a nice, pretty, full-size one. What we're going to do is we're going to try to divide it. So we're taking it out of the container. You can see that it's got um, a lot of good roots coming out. You can just... All right. Now, I know a lot of you ask if I would break up this root ball. Yes, it's got a lot of roots right here. So all I would do is just come in here with my fingers and just kind of like pull it apart a little bit, right? I'm not going to go in there and just completely break it out. But what I have is my hoary hoary knife. We've talked about this before. This is like more of a knife side. This is more of a serrated side. And then of course the great pointer. So what we're going to do is if you can see it kind of naturally, if you've got, you can see where the plants are. So we're just going to go in there with the hoary hoary and just kind of find those little individual um, clumps and try to pull them apart some. So I went in with my hoary hoary. It's a great tool because it's nice and sharp and I just kind of cut it. And we're gonna gently kind of pull it apart. So hopefully you can see where I'm starting to pull it apart right here. And then we're gonna work the hoary hoary serrated side, kind of cut those roots and pull. And let's see what we have. Okay, so now hopefully you can see that we have a really nice plant right here, a single plant with a nice set of root systems. So we can plant this one in a smaller crack um, and it will spread. Now on this one, we still have multiple plants that we can get in here and divide. It's, if you've ever divided a hosta, it's very similar in that aspect. So you're finding your clumps. So here's one again, serrated side. Oh, er, er. well, this will be interesting. Okay, so again, experiment. So I didn't get as much, obviously as much roots as I wanted to. I still have some. So we'll go ahead and plant this and we're just gonna see how tough this plant is. And then I've got more over here. 
I think I have learned more in gardening on things that maybe did not work out as opposed that did work out. So don't ever be afraid to experiment in the garden. Just go for it. Okay, maybe I was a little bit more gentle with that one. All right, so, yep. So we got really three nice clumps out of that one <laughs> with possibly a fourth. So I'm gonna find little nooks and crannies and get these guys planted in there. friends this project is complete i got all the ajugas planted they're in there they are biotoned they have their mulch back around them they got a nice drink of water it's a good way to also clean up that flagstone but they're all in there though the one that i divided into four that will be a little experiment we shall see how she does i think it'll do fine the key is of course is to get as many of the roots as you possibly can but that is a great way to um, spread out your resources so you know you can take if i had taken those 21 and divided them into four that would have given me you know 84 of those plants right 21 times 4 84 it's a ton of plants so maybe you need a bigger plant to go in a bigger space maybe you only fill in a little space or you can divide it that's the beauty of gardening is very adaptable i think i did forget to mention that this black scallop ajuga will produce beautiful little small bluish purple flowers in the early spring so that will be yet another added bonus to have this plant as a ground cover because it'll be covered in little blue flowers that the pollinators the honeybees will absolutely love um, so this is a fantastic plant that will just give me year-round color structure again it's another layer to the garden texture difference i love it so as always thank you so much for gardening with creekside y'all have a great day we'll see you in the next video bye friends